For those of you who do not know, I am a huge Formula One fan, a huge car fan in general, and I was super excited a few months ago to be able to build my first ever racing sim. But there's a problem. The monitor I'm using right now just ain't cutting it. And that's where the Samsung Odyssey Neo G9 comes into play. Now you've probably already heard of the Odyssey G9, but the Neo signifies a new and improved version of Samsung's ultra, ultra wide 49 inch display. And that's exactly what we have here. So let's take this thing out of the box, shall we? So while we are busy taking this out of the box, I imagine it'll take a few minutes. There's a lot to get through here. I uh, figured I'd run through a few of the uh, specifications, things you, sh you should know really going into this. Uh, if you're gonna buy an ultra wide monitor like the Neo G9, um, you need to know first off that it will take up a ton of real estate on your desk if you plan to put it on one. This is essentially two 16 by nine monitors combined into one big 32 by nine display, essentially two 27 inch monitors to be exact. And that's why it's roughly 49 inches or so diagonal. It also has a 1000 R curve, which is as far as I know, the sharpest curve of any curved monitor on the market. It also, <laughs> <laughs> There's so many things. 2048 dimming zones, okay, which beats the heck out of the previous G9 model. It also uses Samsung's mini LED technology, so this picture should look really nice. Up to 2000 nits of brightness in HDR 2000 or 2000 HDR. I forget which way that's supposed to go. That is just, that's just nuts. Oh, and did I mention 240 hertz refresh rate? So this would be perfect for a racing sim. I'm super excited to get this thing mounted in the sim. I cannot tell you how how great this is gonna be when we get it all together because I've been noticing that um, I don't see anything at all to my left or right while I'm racing in a racing sim. I just don't, unless I'm playing in VR, which the games I like to play, most of those don't support VR, unfortunately. Um, there's no way for me to know who's driving up on my left or my right. So having such a wide aspect here will give me that ability to see them coming up from my sides. Uh, that's a huge help. It means I don't run into people. That's always a good thing, right? Unless you're Kyle, you run into people all the time. Yeah, he's a griefer. Now some things you'll find in the box, we get a power cable here. Looks like we had an internal AC adapter, which is nice, no external brick to deal with in the Odyssey Neo G9. You get a display port cable included and USB 3.0 cable. Wow, look at this bulbous thing. Actually, it is, it's so curved that it makes it seem as though from this perspective, the monitor is super thick, when in reality, it, it's not very thick at all. Um, I might, uh, ooh, I might need your help with this one. Actually, here we go. Okay. Probably a two person job to set this thing up. <laughs> it's almost as tall as I am. Holy cow. <sighs> yeah, don't drop this. Don't pull a Linus, please don't. Look at this. It's upside down, but look at this. I've been holding this for just a few seconds and I'm already out of breath. I, 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 I mean, I, I knew how big it was gonna be based on the size of the box, but like taking this out and just seeing how curved it is, it looks unreal. It looks so futuristic, so modern. I cannot wait to plug this in. I'm gonna put this on the stand first so you guys can see what it looks like if you wanted to use the included stand. It's actually pretty good. So I think the best way to do this, and this is coming from somebody who was not referring to the manual, which could prove catastrophic in a few minutes. I think we're just gonna try to put the stand together. Oh, that is just so satisfying. This is so beautiful. Look at that. Uh, I think we're just gonna try to do it with the monitor laying flat. I think this is, yeah, this is definitely the best way to do it. And this might be what the manual recommends anyway. That is, that is swell. And then you just need to secure these four included Phillips screws. Please don't break anything in the process. God, that was so cringy. And if you'd all cared about aesthetics at the rear, you get a little uh, plate to cover up those screws you just locked down. Again, uh, no idea what I'm doing here. Samsung's probably watching this cringing. Oh, that, that was actually really easy to do. Wow. This is a work of art, folks. This is just nutty. How does it look on camera, Kyle? <laughs> He's still in disbelief. He just, he cannot fathom an ultra, ultra wide, ultra, ultra curved monitor like this. I've gotta be honest, folks, I'm, I'm fanboying a bit. So with the included stand, you actually get a fair degree of rotation. You can tilt it a, a good ways forward and quite a ways back. And I think that's it. I don't think there's really a point in rotating. <laughs> you couldn't even rotate it like this way because it's just too tall. Um, so it pretty much does what it needs to do. I mean, given the size of the, the sheer size of this monitor, um, it works. Now you might be wondering, uh, well, okay, a monitor this big 
do I have to use the included stand? The answer to that, my friends, is no. Samsung gives you an adapter that allows you to vase mount it to pretty much anything, assuming it can handle the sheer weight of this. All right, now Kyle begged me to do this because uh, he, he's still he's still having trouble comprehending the sheer size, and no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> He's in love with this, but he's really curious how this is gonna look while playing, I don't know, first person shooter like Call of Duty. You wanna try Warzone with this, Kyle? Yeah. <laughs> he's okay, all right. So, uh, what, yeah, I wasn't planning this, but I, I've got a PC here. We're gonna hook this up to it and see what it looks like. I, I honestly don't think that this monitor is gonna be the best for first person shooters. Um, it's gonna be certainly advantageous in some regards. I guess, you know, if you're seeing the corners of your screen, your field of view is obviously a lot wider with such a wide aspect, but it's gonna be, I don't know, I feel like it's gonna be a bit too much. Uh, for racing, totally different story. Again, trying to see your opponents, you know, driving up next to you, uh, I think that's gonna be very beneficial. But first person shooters, I'm not, I'm not fully convinced yet, Kyle. Well, let's see, let's cut straight to it. Uh Kyle, hmm? this this isn't oh, no, Call of Duty Warzone. Oh my gosh, Kyle. I mean, it's certainly trippy in first person shooters. I'll give you that. So Kyle, um, how the monitor feel? I mean, how, how is the, the immersion factor and, and the curvature and the, the wide aspect, field of view, how'd all that kind of blend in a To FPS? be honest, honestly, it's unlike anything I've ever played before. It's It feels more precise if I'm, if I'm being totally honest. You feel like you know right where you're going to be aiming as you're moving with the mouse. Because you can see that far yeah. to your left and right. It's really weird, yeah. but you don't, you'd figure you'd have to do a lot more head turning yeah, and stuff that's what to get I the thought. aiming, yeah. but you really don't. Like you, your total confidence in just staying right where you're looking and then just moving the mouse, it goes right to it. So your it's, peripherals are helping you then. You time. don't need to move your eyes or your head. No. All you need to know is that something is there, something that shouldn't be there, right? Absolutely. Just don't shoot a teammate. <laughs> <clears throat> he did that a couple Happened times. Happened quite a few times in hardcore, yeah. sorry about that. So an important aspect of this panel that I, I really wanted to hit on in this video mm -hmm. was the effect of ghosting as a result of VA technology implementation. So this does use uh, a very, very elongated, obviously, VA mm -hmm. panel, but it is backlit with mini LEDs. And that's how you have those 2048 dimming zones to give you really great contrast in multiple areas of an image. But VA technology has historically been a bit behind with respect to ghosting. And that's what I wanted to demonstrate here, the fact that it really isn't as bad as it could have been and it's much better than it was in the g9 that i saw earlier last year and you can see for yourself in slow motion the remnants of previous frames trailing behind these ufos i mean there there aren't many of them this looks so much better than honestly i expected even out of the neo g9 really great job here and while we're on the subject of picture quality color reproduction is so dang good on this panel 125 percent of the srgb gamut means that your colors are going to look very vibrant very accurate and when combined with the massive bump in dimming zones to 2048 again you're going to get some of the best contrast ratios some of the best overall quality video for an ultra wide of this caliber now on the subject of dimming zones i have a demonstration pulled up uh, it's just a white shape that's moving across the screen left to right uh, bear in mind this is only a 16 by 9 uh, video here so the left and right sides of the monitor won't even be involved in this test uh, but you can see these uh, very faint white lights trying to shine through an otherwise black screen as the shape moves around it and those are the dimming zones now in a monitor where you only have maybe like 10 or 20 of these zones you'll see very large white blotches on an otherwise black background and that doesn't look very good when you have 2048 zones however you get really great contrast ratios a very sharp jump between something that is bright on the screen and something that is virtually black or as close to black as you can get with VA technology. This is a huge difference in my opinion, a very, very important selling point over that of the original Odyssey G9, which only had, if I recall, maybe a couple dozen dimming zones at the most. Uh, it, it, it's such a night and day difference. The contrast ratios look so much better on the Neo. Now, when it comes to racing sim applications, this is where I really think the Odyssey Neo G9 is gonna shine. You, you really need to be able to see your peripherals, your left and right, and in a game, like F1 2020 where you, you don't have the option for VR support where, where you'd have the ability to turn your head left or right to see your opponents driving up beside you. Maybe you're going into a turn, you have someone on your inside and you can't see them in a typical 16 by nine screen like this without totally jacking up your field of view. This is where I really think having the G9 is going to be so beneficial. So again, just so you have an idea what we're working with, the, just a typical 16 by nine aspect screen here. I can't even see my mirrors on either side of my own car. Now in the game, I can obviously benefit from this mirror up top, but the, 
this is not a real thing. I mean, if I was racing a real Formula One car, I wouldn't have this aid here. I just have my left and my right mirrors. So you can see how in a game like this, having additional real estate to your left and right it's just so much easier. It's, it's so much peace of mind at high speeds. If you're an online competitive racer or, or maybe you just like playing casually, but you hate the fact that you have these huge blind spots that you can do nothing about because you have a static point of view, this is where an ultra wide and in particular an ultra ultra wide, a 32 by nine aspect is gonna come in super handy. So let's switch these screens out. So the first thing we need to do is detach the included monitor stand. We're gonna install the included included vase mount adapter plate. I believe, I believe that's how it sits just like that. And we're gonna lock it down with these four included Phillips screws. I think it's really cool that uh, Samsung allows you to mount these uh, huge displays to third party stands. And now we've got this, uh, this adapter plate for the racing Sims. We've got two adapters here, uh, but I still think It'll be sturdy enough. We've got these screws here to thread through. I am trusting Kyle with this process. <laughs> He's just barehanding this monitor. It is massive. Okay. I think that's it. <laughs> How does it look? This is what I'm talking about. We're just looking at a desktop wallpaper here and it is just, in I feel like I'm looking at this shot from like the top of a high rise in Shanghai. This is, this is literally, the most immersive monitor I have ever used. And it's because in part it is so curved, but also it's so freaking wide. It really does wrap around you and pull you. And I cannot wait to race on this thing. Let's set up Formula One, yeah? Oh my. <laughs> oh, I love this. This is awesome. I, I, I'm hoping the way it's set, yes. Look, <laughs> we can see the mirrors now. The mirrors are actually usable in F1 2020. I mean, I, if you wanted to, you could probably make it work in 16 by nine, but you'd have like the weirdest field of view ever. Everything would be super squished and your steering wheel would look so far away. This is actually almost perfect the way that it's defaulted now. Um, there are a few things we could do to kind of tweak this, make it look possibly a bit better. So I like to use the cockpit view. For those who are wondering why the heck I use this view instead of like the overhead right above the halo view, which is very common in F1 2020. Uh, I just prefer this because this, this feels the most real to me, right? This is how an F1 driver will more or less see the road. And uh, I like to experience things the way they would, at least virtually. Uh, that's why I turn off all of the uh, in-game assists as well. Uh, I don't have rewind enabled. I don't have traction control or any of that stuff simulation damage it's just it just feels the most real to me and if i suck you know what it's it's still it's just how it is you know <laughs> if i was in a real car it'd be a lot worse if i was uh, performing terribly so uh we've got field of view here we could tweak that's going to i mean this is going to be the biggest impact so we could sit pretty close right your steering wheel is going to look pretty large when you're up when you're that far forward but then of course you lose all of this to the left and right so it kind of defeats the purpose of having a wide screen so if we pull this back to about where the mirrors get cut off. So right at the edge, I think this is good here. So 0.15 negative. Uh, and I showed you earlier, there is an option here to kind of give you a glance to the right or left, depending on which way you're turning. But I really don't like how that feels. Um, it, it just, it doesn't feel natural to me. It gives me headaches, to be frank. Uh, not something that I wanted to take advantage of. I'd prefer just to have the static field of view and and uh, maybe turn on the arrow assist. And then, like I said, though, I don't like having assists on. So it's kind of a catch 22. But here I don't need that. I don't need to have the the look to apex limit enabled at all. So I keep it at zero degrees now. I think we're good to go. I mean, this is just, check it out. I feel like I'm in the car. I really cannot think of another screen out there that is going to give me this kind of feeling in the game. Oh yeah, I mean, look at that. <laughs> This is so, this is so cool. Uh, this is, I think, as close to VR as you're gonna get without going full VR headset and the like. Uh, and VR, I mean, it's nice. I've tried it. Um, there are a few exploits to get it to kind of sort of work in F1 2020, but it just gives me, it gives me headaches. It doesn't feel natural. Um, I'd, I'd much prefer just this kind of screen here. Let's go ahead and start a race and see how it goes. Probably not very well. Probably not. My launches always suck too, so there's that. Oh, this is such a cool feeling. Oh my God, look at the cars. We can see, what, what is this? Look at that, we can see all of these cars. I see that Haas right there, trying to come up on my right. I'm not shifting when I should, just ignore that. This is 
so great. I mean, just a totally different element now added to my races. I see that there's a McLaren right there. I need to be careful when I cut over. Look, at, look how quickly he came up. I wouldn't have seen that. Get that McLaren coming up again on my right. <laughs> look at that. And a Haas coming up on my right. I mean, I'm letting them pass me. I'm not, I'm not this bad at the game, I promise. <laughs> and then the racing point on the inside. I can see all of it. I know exactly how I need to turn to avoid a collision now. Just a surreal feeling. This is so awesome. I feel like this monitor was just made for games like this. Look at them all swarming. <laughs> it's, it's so cool to be able to use mirrors now. Uh. Oh, I have missed them. And I don't have to enable that rear view kind of artificial mirror that uh, that the game gives you, which I mean, definitely you should use uh, if you don't have any other option, if you can't, you know, take advantage of an ultra wide monitor like this. But uh, yeah, there I go, totally crashed out. Now, another game I'm very curious about is Forza 7. You could use this game as an example or iRacing or Assetto Corsa or what have you. Uh, but a game that allows you to drive, right, everyday street cars as well as stock cars and Formula One cars and, and everything else out there. Um, I, I wanna see what the cockpit looks like. I'm just, I just got a GT3 RS here and I'm gonna see uh, what it looks like to have everything kind of just spread out in front of you with this panel. Let's give it a shot. I think we've got it set up for 51. 20 by 1440. Oh yeah, this is gonna look, this is gonna look great. I am super excited. I think I have cockpit view already enabled, at least I should. Oh yeah. Oh, this, <laughs> it, it, it works for regular cars too, folks. This is so awesome. Oh my God, I, can't, <laughs> I forgot that I don't have Formula One brakes anymore. Wow, okay, what a cluster at this first turn. I'm having a lot of fun with this, if you cannot already tell. Uh, now my right mirror is cut off. Uh, this is just a consequence of sitting right in a left-hand drive vehicle. My left mirror though is well within frame. I also have my rear view mirror, because again, this is a, a street car, right? So uh, you'll have one of those to utilize as well. I've got to say, just like being able to see your entire dash, <laughs> like I, I can literally see the very right air vent for the passenger. That, that is insane. I tell you, the one thing this is missing, and I'm working on setting it up right now, is like a surround sound stereo speaker setup for this racing sim. Once we get that, right, because sound is the other, like that's the other piece of the puzzle. You have to have that for this to feel truly immersive. And I'm, I'm really missing it right now because I, I, I have everything else. I mean, this monitor provides so much immersion already, and I do have like speakers off to my right. You can probably hear a bit of the car through the microphone, but having a surround sound set up here would just be the icing on the cake. I don't think I would ever get up from this chair. It's gonna drive the wife nuts, and my, my little one's probably gonna freaking love this. Now, I don't think that this game benefits from the ultra wide aspect to the same extent that F1 2020 did, right? In that game, you're sitting in a very recessed cockpit, so it's not like you can just look out your left or right window uh, like you can here. Uh, but what I will say is that having this extra real estate, especially to my left in the case of this turn here, is it gives me more confidence into a turn. I can better gauge how fast I need to approach a turn and how deep I need to turn into it. I can estimate where my apex is gonna be, stick to the racing line better because I can see more of the turn in my my field of view. Whereas before, right, if I had just had a 16 by nine panel, the turn ends here. I don't have any data past this point. So how am I supposed to kind of anticipate what I need to do in the turn? So that is where this ultra wide panel really comes in handy, uh, even for just general racing games like this. You feel much, much more confident. Another advantage of the Odyssey Neo G9 is its insane HDR capabilities, thanks in large part to the efficiencies baked into Samsung's quantum mini LED technology. In tandem, Quantum HDR 2000 supports peak brightnesses up to 2000 nits and a static contrast ratio approaching 1 million to one. Forza 7 supports HDR and things are yeah, still a bit finicky with some versions of Windows, but when calibrated correctly, the picture looks absolutely stunning. You can see sharp transitions between bright and dark areas of the screen even while moving this fast. And when combined with a stellar color gamut, you'll almost feel like you're really sitting in the cockpit. Almost. Quantum HDR 2000 is also useful in first person shooters and the like, tying back into the experience Kyle had, if you remember, with COD Warzone. You can better discern enemies at night and in shadows without the compromise of unnecessary blur and backlight bleed. So hopefully by this point, you've been able to identify several advantages that the Odyssey Neo G9 has. First 
off over the original Odyssey G9, so it's a very noticeable improvement, especially with picture quality. It looks so good in person, even without HDR enabled. And the jump to literally thousands of quantum mini LEDs means you'll experience some of the best contrast ratios in the business outside of OLED. But the other clear advantage of an Odyssey panel like this one over vanilla 1440p monitor is its 32 by 9 aspect, of course. This is literally two 16 by 9 panels squished together, and yes, you could use it for other things too, like content creation. It's probably a big one that's crossing your mind right now, seeing how wide this screen is. Wow, it's essentially two separate screens, and you can run picture in picture, you can run picture by picture, uh, so you could treat this as two separate monitors if you wanted, uh, but I wanted to kind of I don't know, approach this from a different perspective. When I first saw this panel and, and uh, Samsung had reached out about wanting to sponsor this video, I, re I really, I couldn't help but picture this thing replacing the original monitor I had on this racing sim. And I'm really glad that I followed through with this because, wow, it, it, it makes driving in this thing so, so enjoyable. Now by this point, if you are still sort of kind of on the edge, particularly in this environment here that we have it, right, a racing sim environment, I, I suppose I understand. If I'm being candid, this is an expensive product, okay? I, I think even Samsung themselves would admit that. And yes, I'm saying that in a sponsored video because I, I think that it's, it, the writing's on the wall, okay? The price speaks for itself. It is extremely premium. It's not for everybody. It will make many people sweat throwing this into their carts, right? But if you are still entertaining the idea of buying one and, and you're not sure if you should pull the trigger, I think the deciding factor will be being able to witness one yourself in person with your own eyes. So if you have a local Best Buy in your area, maybe a micro center if you're lucky, uh, somewhere that might have one of these on display, I think that's gonna be your best bet. Go and see for yourself just how good one of these is in person and that might convince you to follow through with the purchase. And I mean, if it helps you rationalize the purchase price anymore, this is technically two monitors squished together, right? 32 by nine versus 16 by nine, multiply 16 by two, that's 32 by nine, right? That aspect is, ultra ultra wide that's why i'm not just saying ultra wide because it is way wider than a standard 21 by 9 ultra wide panel uh, but on top of that you're going to get right that 240 hertz refresh rate you can run picture by picture or picture in picture split the screen right down the middle treat it as two separate displays at 240 hertz a piece technically 1440p each I, that, you're getting a lot of screen real estate for that price. Also remember, you're gonna get NVIDIA G-Sync, you're gonna get free sync, you're gonna get those 2048 dimming zones. Uh, it just, the list goes on. You're gonna get that 1000 R curve, one of the sharpest curved panels on the market. And then this ultra wide form factor, I think it is definitely needed. Otherwise, those, va those far corners of the screen are just gonna be way too far away from your face. So I'm really glad they went with the 1000 R here. Even tighter, actually, I think would be better. So maybe in the future, they'll make an even more curved uh, panel in this aspect. Uh, but for now, I I'm really, really happy with the use case that we have this set up in now for a racing sim. I think it's just the, the, the perfect marriage. With that, if you guys enjoyed this one, be sure to let me know by giving this one a thumbs up. I would appreciate that. Also consider subscribing if you have not already and consider leaving a comment in the comment section below. That's all for this one. I'm going to be playing this the rest of the night. My name is Greg. Thanks for learning with me.